Okay. So, I mean, did you want to make me a co-host too, just in case? Can there be three co-hosts? Uh, I don't know if that's okay. possible. Let me try. Not, don't worry. Yep. There we go. Okay. Good. 日本の皆様、今ちょっとサイモンからもあのアナウンスがあったんですけども、え今回のチャット機能を使ってえー、っと質問を受け付けています。あのまあ全員私も含めてなんですけど、そんなに英語が堪能でないという方たちもいらっしゃると思いますので、どうぞ質問はもう日本語でも受け付けています。えーちょうどあの話題提供者のお話の間についてあっと思ったことを書いてくださっても構いませんし皆さん方の知見に基づいたご意見なんかも、えー、お待ちしています。質問やご意見のある方々、えー、チャット機能を使って日本語で、えー、お寄せいただければあと英語でもチャット機能を使っていただくとみんなでシェアできると思いますのでよろしくお願いいたします。OK、サイモン、リチョこんにちは。リチョル・ディクセンです。Hello, my name is Rachel Dickinson. Sento George Girodo no Master A Des. I am the master of the Guild of Saint George. Kono Girodo wa Kyojin John Ruskin ga Shodai no Masata Tashite Sen Hapyaku Nanaju Ichi Nen Sini Seturitsu Shimashita. The guild was founded by the polymath John Ruskin as its first master in 1871. Gejutsu to Kogei, Dezain to Chiki Kezai no Fuko o Mezatsu Kyoiku Dantai Pushite Katsudo Shite Imas. It is an educational charity for art, craft, design. And rural economy. Memba wa companion to Yobare, Masuga Genzai, Juni Monokuni Kara Atsumate Imas. Today we have members called companions in a dozen countries. Nihon wa Motomo Katsudo Teki Na Kuno no Hitotsu Des. One of the most active of these is Japan. Koko kara wa aigo de hanashi masunaye. Now I'm going to change the language to English, if you please. <laughs> so thank you. The plan for today's meeting emerged from a conversation I had with Guild Companion and my co host and friend, Chaki Yokoyama. We wanted to help bridge and make connections between <coughs> Japanese companions who live the furthest. From the Guild of St. George's main activity in the United Kingdom and other companions. An online meeting to share ideas seemed ideal. Japanese Ruskinians have much to teach those of us who live outside of Japan. One exciting area is the approach that they are taking to using、Jap、Ruskin's ideas in relation to community building. And especially community design. Today, I am delighted to welcome you to this Zoom symposium, which features the voices of Japanese Ruskinians sharing their inspirational work with a global audience. And I want to express my deep gratitude to Chiaki, who has contributed、uh, so much in coordinating this, and to all the Japanese companions and Ruskinian friends who have contributed to this event. I've heard that the theme of the Osaka World Expo to be held in 2025 is designing future society for our lives. Inochi kagayaku mirai no design. It makes it all the more timely that we listen to Ruskin's words once more for that design. There is no wealth but life. Inochi nakushite. Tommy wa nashi. This meeting will be a step in that direction. Thank you and welcome. Thank you, Rachel, for such heartwarming and welcoming message for us Japanese companions and friends and everybody. 
Also, I would like to express our gratitude for giving us the opportunity to talk with many of us Kenyans outside of Japan and in Japan too. As Rachel has mentioned, it seems there has never been a time when our attention is more focused on life than now. Climate warming has quietly disrupted ecosystem around us and the pandemic has either taken or drastically changed our lives and the livelihoods. Russia's invasion of Ukraine has hit the global economy and affects lives of people all over the world. But pandemics and the global crisis have brought about new ways of connection, as is this meeting goes. While talking about a community, community was a more intimate form against an invisible society. Now, through space, we can build communities, I mean, new communities, and influence each other in new ways. This rapid change may be likened to the industrial revolution of the 19th century and beyond. In the age with social change, but without the social networks, surprisingly, Raskin asserted the importance of the imagination in order to connect. He urged that it is not the system that creates wealth that we need, but the imagination that creates life instead. It is about connecting one's um, immediate actions to the end of their inference. Today, many younger generations in Japan are turning to Ruskin's words or ideas, recognizing the need for a new life-based community and joining hands across their own areas. Establishing in 1931 by Rizo Mikimoto, a pioneer Ruskin in Japan, Tokyo Ruskin Society, Tokyo Ruskin Kyokai, newly welcomed Mikimoto's great-grandson, Hirohiko Mikimoto as its new chairman. And now at the Osaka Raskimori Center, based on the collection of another Japanese Raskinian companion of the guild, Norio Tsuyuki, a young force is trying to change the very nature of the region in line with Raskin's ideas, as we are going to hear about it today. This meeting is an attempt to connect the various activities taking place in Japan to the rest of the world. First of all, let me introduce today's contributors. え、では、日本の皆さん方、え、今回、え、いろいろ協力してくださった方たちご紹介したいと思います。スタのえっとビデオオンにしてください。え、ファーストはミズイクコクラサワオブ関西街ユニバーシティ。ミズのえ、ミ
Hello, everyone. My name is Ikuko Kurasawa, and um, I'm from Kansai Gaida University, uh, Osaka, and also I'm a staff member uh, at the, the Ruskin and Morris Center of Osaka. And um, I'm going to share the slide. I hope we can see it. Yes, I can, we can see it. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Um, so now that I am seeing all the participants and everybody is, um, I think, knows a lot about Ruskin and I am so novice in Ruskin study and I feel very... <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little nervous about talking about what I'm going to present, but um, so um, today in this uh, first section, uh, I'd like to give you a very brief overview of Ruskin's influence in Japan today. And to talk about today's uh, influence, I'd like to go back to historical background uh, and introduce us of Ruskin's thoughts in Japan first. So now, uh, uh, today we have Miki Sensei, actually, who is a, a Ruskin scholar, and in her research in 2020 in a journalist, uh, a journal published in 890, uh, sorry, sorry, 1884, an anonymous Japanese writer mentioned Ruskin as an art educator, which is probably the earliest Japanese reference to his name. And afterwards, in 1888, journalist Soho Tokutomi uh, introduced Ruskin according to Kikuchi, 1997. In 1868, Meiji Restoration took place and Japan opened its borders to the outside world after about 350 years of national isolation. So the context of Western philosophy and thought were formidable to Japanese, according to Kimura 1997, and the modernization was so rapid. So we needed someone like Soho, uh, Dr. Tomi, aforementioned journalist, who is a powerful journalist, and wrote the digest of Ruskin's uh, doctrine of political economy, according to Kimura 1982. So this is uh, Soho, Dr. Tomi. And gradually, however, the people looked for modernization on their own, according to Kimura. In such times, Ruskin's idea and thoughts were introduced in various fields, such as like literature and art, architecture, philosophy, economics and social welfare, and etc. Now, um, I'd like to go to a literature a little bit uh, to talk about some more details in the literature. Uh, so Tenzui Kubo, who is a Chinese literature and uh, Chinese literature scholar and wrote Sansui Bilong, which is Beauty Aesthetic Theory of Mountain Water. And Shigetaka Shige, uh, who was a geographer, critic, and member of House of Representatives, they talked about the beauty and aesthetic of nature and popularized the alpinism in Japan. Usui Kojima also made a contribution to the fad mountaineering he met Walter Weston who advised him to found the Japanese Alpine Club and became the first president of Japanese Alpine Club. And they're all influenced uh, by Ruskin. Speaking of Ruskin's influence <clears throat> and description of beauty in nature, you can see in Shimazaki Toson, Toson Shimazaki's writing, as well as one in, ones in Soseki Natsume, and novelist Soseki Natsume was a keen reader of Ruskin. He studied abroad in England in 1900 through 1902. The year of 1900 was the year Ruskin passed, and he quoted Ruskin's word in his novel, according to Kumasaka. In art, Okakura Tenshin, 
uh, who is the author of the Book of Tea, and Toru Iwamura, art critic, a Western art historian and art journalist, uh, was uh, were the ones that we can found uh, the, who got a lot of influence from uh, Ruskin. And Toru Iwamura actually wrote critical biography of Ruskin, which he didn't complete. Um, and also Yanagi uh, Soetsu, uh, who is uh, one of the founders of Minge movement in Japan. And um, we cannot actually uh, find any reference to Yanagi being directly influenced by Ruskin or Morris even, but given uh, Yanagi's background, it seems unlikely that he had not heard of Ruskin or Morris's idea. He was also a friend of uh, with Bernard Leach, an etching artist from England. When we talk about literature uh, in terms of uh, the narrative uh, in Ruskin in Japan, we cannot forget Ryuzo Mikimoto. And as uh, Professor Yokoyama introduced earlier, uh, the Mikimoto family, and especially Ryuzo Mikimoto, uh, founded the Tokyo Ruskin Library, and uh, he laid uh, the foundation of Ruskin research. So with the, his collection and the Ruskin Library in Tokyo, we can learn Ruskin thoughts and idea today. Ruskin's influence, of course, uh, extends to economics and politics and social warfare, as I said. Um, and uh, Toyohiko Kagawa is one of them. He's a social reformer. Christian pacifist and labor activist, and he's the father of the cooperative movement. Um, he read the books written by Ruskin, Tolstoy and Christian socialist, and embraced nonviolent anti-war and pacific, uh, pacifist ideas. He lived in slum areas uh, in Kobe and started the settlement movement in Tokyo after World War II. After World War II, the history of Ruskin uh, studies in Japan lost the tide, but uh, in 1997, exhibition of uh, Ruskin in Japan, uh, 1890 through 1940, Nature for Art, Art for Life, uh, and also uh, in 2000, uh, John Ruskin, A Thinker's Vision through Mikimoto Ryuzo uh, were held. So we were uh, gradually studying uh, the Ruskin thought in that way. And now that uh, I'd like to actually introduce uh, Mr. Yamada Yamazaki, who is a community de designer in Japan. And Mr. Yamazaki studied landscape design and became a community designer. Uh, and he said uh, he is uh, 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 strongly influenced by John Ruskin. About the community design, you will hear more detailed uh, explanation later, but with the power of design, it is to help communities enhance their ability to solve local issues and problems. Community design is coming actually from, uh, from various streams I found, and uh, one is art, modern design, and urban planning, and the other would be settlement movement, social work, uh, and social welfare. And uh, community design is one of the new streams that combined uh, different fields with Ruskin's influence. And we can see now a new role of design in Japan. And I'd like to pass uh, to Noriko uh, to talk about uh, the community design. Thank you, Ikko san Hi, everyone. My name is Noriko, and I'm also a community designer. I work with Rio Yamazaki, the person she just introduced. I'm just going to share my slide. Oh, hang on. I'll press the wrong button. Right. So um, the community design is not the new word for the Japanese to use. It was. It has appeared in 1960s in mainly in America, and uh, they changed it, the terms of the 
community design has been changed over the years. In 2000, year 2000 onwards, it's more like working with the community with the power of design. So Studio L is the name of our company and we are community design office and L stands for life and there is no else but life, right? So that's the meaning of our name. And we work with the various places of people in Japan and there are so many different types of issues and we work closely with the local authorities mainly and we also work with the people who are living in the area and mainly what we do is to interview with the local people about what they're thinking of their town or area what they're worried about what they love about what they are thinking of uh, their future and then we are uh, design the setting of the workshop where people can come and talk about the issues or possibilities and we put that ideas into action to check to see if that is feasible if that's fun and if that's uh, something they like to do in the future and then uh, we reflect our thoughts and then we think about again and try again until we can see that people can actually run their activity by themselves. And these are the areas of, uh, well, the examples of the areas of the places that we work. So we work with local authority to manage the public spaces. Um, we work with the revitalization of the towns and high streets. Uh, we also work with the uh, social welfare or medical care, uh, all sorts of things that relates to lives. We were influenced by Ruskin, uh, both of his first uh, life as an art critic and a later life of social reformer. So through the first half of his life, he was an art critic, so we take his thought and the influence of art and design through that time. And social reform, we, uh, we are influenced from the later of his life. So we combine those two together and we work with the local community. And uh, this is something that you know better than I do. But these are from, sorry, I can't see the name. Um, oh, sorry, wrong slide. Right. It was about the ornament that he wrote in the book. And number two, the constitutional ornament, and number three, revolutionary ornament are the combination that we take the elements for community design, which is. Uh, in the broad ways, we we take a meaning from number two as, let's say, the local authority are the people in the power, and number three is the uh, the resident. So we combine the in the way from the local authority that what they would like to solve, and we combine the ideas, hopes, and wishes from the local residents. Combine those two together and we make something that they mutually agree with and uh, take on to their future. <clears throat> right, so when we do the community design, we would um, design fun-centered project. So when we want to design uh, our workshop or project, we take both something right or something good to solve the issue, but also we cannot forget something fun or something to enjoy. Otherwise people will leave or do not take any interest. So fun centered project combined with the right or good, something good or right, something right. Um, so these are some of the pictures that uh, from the our workshops, but I'm gonna explain 
more details or give the examples later in the uh, symposium. Thank you. Thank you, Ikuko and Noriko. And I'm so sorry that um, before that, that the section started, I forgot to introduce the Noriko. Um, I'm sorry about that. And um, Noriko is um, the currently working at the Tokyo Office of Studio L. And um, she really showed us the concept significance. Um, now we understand that the, where we stand in the history of Japanese rescue and fraud and how that the, our community design concept is heavily influenced by the, the rescue. Um, do you have any questions? Uh, you can just put it on the chat function or um, there are quite a few researchers who are specializing in that area too. So if you would like to add some kind of comments or opinions, um, you're more than welcome to do that. この方面ではすごく詳しい方たちも多いと思いますので、よかったらぜひとも今のお話の中でもう少しコメントしたいという方がいらっしゃったらお願いしたいと思います。May um, I ask question to um, first that uh, Ikuko, if you don't mind. Um, well, it is clear that many Japanese are influenced by the Ruskins from so many different directions. Um, that's why that the, the Ruskin is truly known as a polygon or giant, like uh, art, mountains, and education, and the socialism. Um, so, are they were well, they influencing each other, or were well, they just had to say acting separately? If you know anything about it, I actually don't really know. Um, okay, about, all right, that's uh, all right. Cool. Yeah, the uh, the figures, the historical figures from the past, but mm -hmm. um, how can I say? Like now that I can see the the Mr. Yamazaki is mm -hmm. uh, now I'm talking to him like uh, through the through this project, and I see that he's applying Ruskin's ideas in so many ways, and if if they are not working with other Ruskinians in Japan in the past, I'm from the past, I'm sure they are actually using the ideas in a different ways, like different fields sure. uh, in themselves. Um, so that um, it, I cannot really get the, uh, have any <laughs> specific examples, but um, Maybe when they had, uh, how can I say, if they had the SNS back then, maybe they could have been more. <laughs> okay. Connected. Sorry. All right. My, yeah, my answers are not really relevant, but. No, 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 no it's very helpful. Uh, there is the, the one question um, from uh, this moment. Um, Rachel, can you read that there is a question on the chat comment? I can do. It's in fact, it's from one of my work colleagues, Emma Liggins, who's asking, okay. thanks for two fascinating papers, Ikuko and Noriko. I learned a lot. Can I ask Ikuko, were there any female Japanese journalists who were interested in the work of Ruskin? Actually, I don't know, but I I wonder if uh, Miki Sensei, if yeah. Haruka, mm -hmm. Professor Miki knows about the uh about it and also she said uh, yes, yes. they did <laughs> um, so actually so japanese ruskinians and um, did um influence um other ruskinians as well and also um so females uh, female ruskinians um such as um kubushiro ochimi actually he was a uh, Actually, she was a niece of Soho Tokutomi, and yeah, who wrote about Ruskin in a female um, magazine. So yes, um, there were some female Ruskinians in Meiji in the Meiji and the Taisho era. Mm. Mm. Would you type the name in the chat? I think that would be really helpful. All right, all right, all right. Um, so that's really interesting. I know Emma's doing a lot of work on female journalists at this period in time. So it's well, that's very really helpful. Um, Kubushiro 
uh, Kubu, Kubu Shiro, yeah. Um, her name is Kubu Shiro Ochimi. Um, um, can, you, can you read that name? I actually, I entered the, you can't see them? <laughs> Yes, so I can see it and we can put that oh, in yeah, yeah. translate and it will give it yeah. to us and yeah, perfect. Yeah, put it in English. Yep. Yeah, so her, her name is Kubushiro Ochimi. Uh -huh. All right. Maybe can you put I it in English. Can you put it in English? I, I, I think I did. Like, oh you did? Uh, okay. Yeah, can can just maybe sorry. Uh, okay. wait wait a bit. Um uh, sorry, I think I don't know much about how to use that chat yeah, yeah. function. Good, thank so you. Sorry. It is there. Yeah. It is there. Anyway, so Kubushiro Ochimi. Yeah. <laughs> so thank nice. you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Erica. And we yeah. are all female and male Raskinians, of course, of modern age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank you. She was very, very... Uh, Okay, forgot about it. Anyway, um, let's go to the, the part three later. So we'll look at the relationship with the local issues and the community design later. And I really love the idea and the fun and the beauty and uh, the two most important parts of the community design too. Okay, now, if you don't mind, let's move to the part two. Um, idea social design. Uh, Mr. Kis Ayasu is a researcher of aesthetics and art and design history. He's also an agriculturalist, I mean the farmer. Yeah. The concept of design has been changed through the activities of practitioners and the researchers. Also, once again, there are many attempts to look back to Ruskin's idea, which Keisuke will delineate here. He will give us many examples of Japanese community design, uh, which can be connected to part three too. Okay, Keisuke, it's yours. Oh, oh thank you very much kind, for kind, kind introduction. And I'm deeply honored to be here. So I will share my presentation. So I am Keisuke Takayasu. I'm teaching uh, design history at Osaka University. Uh, currently, um, my research focus, uh, focus is on tracing the history of social design. While I am not consider myself an expert on Ruskin, nor I am directly involved in community design, so I'd like to provide context by situating uh, uh, both Ruskin's and Yamazaki's work within the broader history of design. I understand that Ryo Yamazaki is a devoted uh, admirer of the, uh, Ruskin's work. However, it is crucial to acknowledge that they lived uh, and worked in entirely different times and regions, and their areas of activity were not very identical either. Therefore, I believe it is necessary to emphasize the significance of Yamazaki's uh, community design within the larger context of social design. In the present day, social design is commonly defined as an endeavor that places a higher emphasis on addressing social issues rather than pursuing profits as its primary objective. The concept of social design has gained increasing prominence since the latter half, uh, latter half of the 20th century as negative aspects of commercial design became more apparent, uh, uh, leading to discussions about the social responsibilities of designers. The term social design didn't become widely recognized until the early 21st century. Nonetheless, it is crucial to acknowledge that the roots of social design can be traced back to the 19th century with figures like Ruskin and Morris often being referenced in discussions uh, about social design. Therefore, I have proposed a three-stage model uh, to uh, trace the evolution of social design. 
The first stage of social design involves a contemplation of society with the objective of uh, creating aesthetically pleasing products as a response to labor-related issues. In the Western countries of the 19th century, two distinct interests coexisted. One, on one hand, artists, craftsmen, and architects dedicated uh, their talent to creating uh, beautiful decorations. On the other hand, charity workers were driven by the urgency to confront labor problems arising from rapid industrialization and impoverish, uh, impoverishment of urban workers. However, in 19th century England, uh, John Ruskin played a pivotal role in bringing these two distinct interests together. He recognized the humane labor within the craftsmanship of Gothic artisans and celebrates the beauty of the ornamentation created uh, through human labor. Subsequently, uh, William Morris took the challenge of translating Ruskin's ideas into practical uh, reality. The second stage of social design marks a clear awareness of its contribution to society with a focus on creating what is genuinely essential while re-evaluating designers' responsibility for excessive consumption. As mass production systems uh, become prevalent in the latter half of the 20th century, industrial design emerged as a recognized profession. However, during the 1960s and 1970s, as environmental concerns gained recognition and social justice issues, especially those between North and South came to the forefront, question arose regarding the responsibility of industrial designers. The most impactful book during this stage is Victor Papanek's 1971 publication, Design for the Real World. Papanek's book features a simple triangle diagram uh, illustrating that commercial designers tend to focus exclusively on uh, creating products for, for the affluent elite, thereby overlooking the essential requirements of the broader population. With, within this, his book, uh, Papanek also presented practical examples that could be easily crafted from locally available waste materials. These included uh, creations uh, like a blazer uh, crafted from a license plate, plate, as you see, and a transport vehicle assembled from an, uh, from an old bicycle. The third stage of social design represents an effort to create uh, society itself emphasizing the rest restoration of severe uh, social bonds and the enhancement of uh, people's quality of life. While environment, uh, environmental enhancements uh, can improve daily living conditions, it's crucial to recognize that these improvements uh, must be sustained by a community's inhabitants. Similarly, even when crafting convenient tools for social welfare, thoughtful consideration must, uh, must be given to how people utilize them. In the 21st century, designers have grown acutely aware that the scope of their work extends beyond mere products, product creation. They are now actively engaged in developing systems to address social challenges and promote uh, cooperation, thereby empowering communities to independently resolve the challenges they face. The third stage of social design is exemplified by Ryo Yamazaki. He employs the term community design to describe his work not as creating physical objects, but as the act of connecting individuals with one another. Originally trained in landscape design, he recognized that even if designers crafted a beautiful park, it maintain its maintenance relied, relied on people's care. 
Consequently, he shifted uh, his focus to the uh, crucial task of fostering connections among people. It was noting that the concept of community design seems to have limited recognition outside of Japan, and its evolution has been significantly influenced by his own experiences. In any case, community design encompasses three potential tasks. Establishing systems such as uh, human resource development, uh, planning events such as workshops, and facilitating informal relationship among people, enab enabling them to autonomously address uh, challenges. Community design is often perceived, an, uh, uh, perceived as an effort to address social issues. However, Yamazaki takes a, a different perspective regarding community design, uh, primarily as the task of uh, fostering connections among individuals within a, com a community, empowering its members to independently address their own challenges. Yamazaki uh, goes so far as to discourage external designer intervention when a community is at risk of disintegration. In such cases, he believes that not only should the residents take responsibility for resol uh, resolving issues, but they must also autonomously uh, sustain the community. The, the ultimate objective of community design is that external assistance becomes uh, unnecessary. Now, we have seen the three stages of social design development. Let's move on to the next step. Social design can be compared to social work when it involves uh, addressing clients' issues and uh, de developing strategies to solve them. When social design shifts its focus from uh, practical tools to creating systems, events, and uh, communities, it becomes even more like social work. However, despite their strong resemblance, these two fields often lack mutual understanding, uh, perhaps due to their distinct labels. The origin of social work can be traced back to the 19th century Britain following the Industrial Revolution. During this period, Charity networks started to emerge in response to the increasing issue of poverty. From, from the outset, two distinct approach came, uh, became apparent. The first approach, as you know, uh, was represented by a uh, charity organization society, which was established in 1869. This organization conducted surveys in each district to identify those in need of assistance, aiming to empower them to achieve self-reliance. The second approach was exemplified by the settlement movement, which began in the 1880s. This was a group of university students who uh, ventured into impoverished areas to address the social conditions contributing uh, to poverty. During the first half of the 20th century, uh, 20th century social work with a focus on individuals in need of assistance was established as casework uh, conducted by trained professionals. However, in the latter half of the 20th century, criticism emerged suggesting that casework for individuals or families might not always address the, the underlying causes of social issues. This criticism led to the uh, rise of radical social work, uh, which aimed to reform social systems and to community social work, which sought to foster mutual support within communities. Today, in develop, uh, developed countries, Social work primarily emphasizes uh, casework with individuals and families. Nonetheless, it has also accumulated uh, valuable experience in realm of community social work, 
reflecting a more comprehensive approach to addressing social、uh, challenges. The origin of social design s h a r e common roots with origin of social work, both stemming from 19th century efforts. One of the uh, in, uh, influential figures during this period in 19th century Britain was John Ruskin, I think. An art critic and social activist. Laskin played a pivotal role in inspiring artist designers like、uh, William Morris and also guided activists toward social welfare initiatives. In contrast, during the 20th century, both、uh, design work, including social design and、uh, social work, were increasingly acknowledged as distinct,、uh, distinct professions. In the 21st century, there has been a notable、uh, transformation. Community design has taken on the responsibility of crafting social systems or even entire communities,、uh, and the design thinking methodology is gaining relevance not just for designers, but also for social,、uh, for social workers and community members. In this contract,、uh, context, Community design is becoming increasingly difficult to differentiate from community social work. Ryo Yamazaki, a prominent,、uh, prominent advocate in this field, appears to be aware of the increasing overlap. In fact, in Japan, there are instances where designers contracted by local governments、uh, are actively involved in community design projects. As the third stage of、uh, social design, a community design focuses on creating systems, events, and、uh, fostering connections between people to tack,、uh, tackle social problems, shifting away from a pri primary focus on、uh, physical objects. This raises a question of how community design differs from previous community development and community social work. And why it is still considered a design discipline. One of the、uh, distinct aspects of design is its role in、uh, crafting plans to initiate new projects and、uh, translate visions into reality. While this task、uh, can be part of、uh, broader community efforts, It doesn't inherently differentiate community design from、uh, other forms of community work with different labels. Another distinguished、uh, feature of design is its ability to enhance the aesthetic qualities of object,、uh, objects or experiences, infusing them with various aesthetic attributes, such, such as enjoyable or、uh, kawaii. This、uh, aesthetic dimension may be one of、uh, the expectations of community design, and、uh, it could be a reason why it continues to be categorized as a design discipline. It might be a good example uh, for uh, aesthetic approach for nursing care,、uh, care caregiver welfare. Uh, often regarded as、uh, challenging and, and、uh, somber. So,、uh, additional, so I skip、uh, this example. So,、uh, additional example will be、uh, provided in part, part three, three. So,、um, I'd like to、uh, conclude my, my dis discussion uh, briefly. Uh, so,、um, it is、um, important to recognize that. Community design is fundamentally、uh, linked to aesthetics,、uh, implying、uh, a consideration of aesthetic experience in people's lives.、Uh, this aspect、uh, should, be, uh, should not be overlooked as it ex extends beyond the mere surface appearance, has a, has a potential to enhance the overall quality of people's lives. From my perspective, the influence of Ruskin's ideas 
uh, can be also be observed within this context. I'm eager to hear the uh, insights of those who are familiar with Raskin's work. Thank you very much. Thank you, Keisuke. It's very inspiring. I can tell that the meaning of the words social and the community are gradually changing. And so it's the meaning of the design too. And at the same time, it is wonderful and strange in a way that the younger generation in Japan is encountering or re-encountering a new Ruskin from the past in this trend. Okay, um, we have a question from Peter. Uh, Peter, uh, will you please ask the question which you kindly posted on chat? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Good, yes. excellent. Well, I've so much enjoyed the presentation so far, but rising constantly in my mind is the question of the relevance of designed landscapes, urban or rural. And it, it just occurs to me to ask whether social design could equally and equally importantly embrace not only buildings, but all the kinds of landscapes which create, in fact, community people who go for walks, for pleasure or health, orchards, children's playgrounds, landscape parks, gardens. And I'm often remembering Ruskin's great instruction to us as a guild to create places that are beautiful, peaceful and fruitful. What nobler thing could there be than that? And I think, you know, it's as important as the buildings. So, oh, thank, thank you very much for your suggestion. So, of course, uh, we must consider the uh, uh, landscape design. So, as, as I said, uh, Yamazaki started with a landscape de designer, but um, so he, he came came to the co community design um, to foster the um, uh, so community to support the land, land, uh, land, land, landscape. And so, uh, as far as I know, the uh, Studio L, uh, 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 so often, so wa wa working with the architect or land landscape de de designer, and so and um, so uh, so uh, community. I think so. Uh, uh, community design plays a role in 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 the uh, uh, so. Uh, 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 in fostering and empowering pe people uh, to uh, maintain the landscape. And so landscape design itself, I think uh, kind of the uh, uh, second stage of so social uh, design that is um, so, um, so it, it's, um, uh, I think the so uh, landscape design is a kind of um, um, so, um, uh, so engaged with the uh, uh, physical objects. So, um, so community design and landscape design uh, wa always working together. Uh, to, uh, we can distinguish uh, them, I think. So, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Peter. Um, do you want to add something about this great question, like um, from members from the Studio L? Hi, um, thank you for your question, Peter. Um, yeah, I agree. And uh, But unfortunately, we often work with the local authorities after they built the parks and the public spaces. We are hoping that they will call us before they plan to do this mm -hmm. so that we can involve the, the residents of the local community to put their voices out. But mm -hmm. often it's been built and sometimes they call us when the people are not going to the parks enough, so mm -hmm. that they want people to come back to the park. Mm -hmm. So that's when they call us to say, how, what can we do to stimulate the local residents to come to the parks more or like use these public spaces more? Mm -hmm. So yeah, in a way we would like to involve as many residents as possible in the planning process as well mm -hmm. as after built. Excellent. Yeah. It's an aspiration that we all have. 
And I think that landscape in all its richness, uh, richnesses of meaning, could possibly be the subject of a follow-up session on, on another occasion. But I wanted to raise it this morning because um, it's not all about buildings. And as people, we respond so much to the environment around us, whether it's urban or rural or a pilgrimage place, a holy place. I was so impressed by the temple gardens when I came to Japan and the way in which they encourage one to meditate, for example, or to, to walk thoughtfully. And all these are all very Ruskinian ideas. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we also have a place called Satoyama, which mm. is, um, um, I think it's really difficult to explain it to the people who don't have Satoyama, which is a mountain or, or forest where we cultivate, human beings will cultivate to, uh, the to make the vegetables, um, use their land to get the, the nature resources to eat or to make something else for as a tool. We've been doing that for many, many years. If you stop doing that, the forest will become like wild again so that we will have the issue from the wild animals and the trees are not growing enough so that we can't build houses. And so people have to maintain this mountain or forest, which is called a Satoyama. And mm -hmm. that we have a long history of that. So we lived with the nature. So we understand how and the respect for nature. So in terms of like designing the new stuff, we should also implicate that into the design process as well. Marvelous, thank you. That, that's what we are doing Hanase project in Kyoto. Satoyama project is that really the same one we do. So Shogun is going to I, I'll, introduce... I'll explain the later. Yeah, so Shogun is going to introduce that project later in the part three. Take it later. Okay. Yeah, it's one of the big issues, isn't it? And how we can live with nature or cohabitate with nature itself. I'm, I'm sure that how to say everybody from the, the different cultures outside of Japan, uh, you might have the same kind of examples too. So later, after the part three, uh, we can have some good discussion on that too. Anyway, thank you very much for the, the, the wonderful talk, Keisuke. And thank you, Peter and Noriko. Uh, to propose that there's some good topics. Oh, thank, okay. Thank you, much, thank you Keisuke. So probably that's why that you started doing the, the farming. Yeah. To know more about the nature. And uh, yes, yes, yeah, yeah. that's really important, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, very important. So agriculture. So um, so uh, we need so uh, far farmers to keep the land landscape so mm -hmm. uh, landscape with a uh, rice, rice field mm -hmm. yeah yeah okay thank you very much everybody um do we have the any other question Rachel Simon can we find on that oh uh, there are no other questions at the moment okay. I don't think. all right sorry I'm so bad at just uh, how do you say reading the, the chat and the talking at the same time and uh, uh, if you don't... I was just thinking that yes if we can have more of a conversation after yeah. the third set of presentations yeah. that would be really lovely to get ideas yeah. going back and forth that's great okay let's move on to part three Okay, now um, we're going to see that there's some other examples um, other than the case you introduced us uh, as an example of what the Japanese Ruskinians and friends are putting Ruskin's idea into practice. Um, today we will introduce, there are many, many examples, but today we will introduce three examples conducted by companions and their friends. Okay, first, uh, let's go back to Noriko once again. Um, first is the Studio L's activities. Thank you. Um, yeah. So I'm just gonna share my slide again. Okay, so uh, I, I tried to keep it as short as possible. Um, I'm going to skip some of them. Um, so we are a very fast uh, population 
we were in a very fast speed of population declining and also aging society. And one of the, oh, sorry about the, the word is in Japanese, but one of the most, uh, the biggest issue is the social isolation. I understand the British also suffer from that social isolation. And uh, we also have a minister who is responsible for tackling the social isolation. But the, as you can see, the Japan is the uh, the loneliest country amongst the OECD. And that, those two cause uh, the many issues, but one of them which is that there are shortage of carer who cares the elderly people. And this graph shows the gap between the people who need a care, which is 2.53 million people, and people who care, carers are 2.15 million people. So they are 380,000 people short. That's in 2025, which so that's in two years time. And the gap is getting wider and wider. So the, the reason why is that the it's probably similar to the British situation. The carers are not so attractive jobs. So people are not really choosing the carer as their uh, a number one job when they leave the university or the schools. And that, but that is like misconception according to the people who work in the nursing care or care industry. They love working as a carer. They enjoy working with the elderly people. They know what it's like, but they are not perceived as they hope and they are well. <clears throat> and I was just going to skip, skip that uh, one of the questions that we always ask to the people who come to our workshop is um, there is an issue so in this case there are shortage of carers um, that's the issue but we don't really think that we can come up with a solution straight away we always have to think about how people would like to live in their lives or in the future, that comes into the element of the solution. So we always ask, how would you like to live your life? Or how would you like your loved ones to live their lives? And this project was called the Design School for Care and Social Welfare. It's to think about the future of care and welfare. And um, we thought about two tactics, which is to increase the people who are involved with the care <clears throat> and also to reduce the risks and needs of a care of the people. And so we run this design school nationwide, ask the people from uh, the Hokkaido, which is in north part of Japan, and Kyushu, which is the south part of Japan, and there are 470 people participated. 60% of those who were already in the work, working in the care industry, 40% of people were not involved in the care industry. So there are students, housewives, people who are actually caring their mothers or fathers, or people are in the creative industry, such as graphic designers, product designers. So, <clears throat> Uh, there are a combination of people who are interested in this designing in care industry. And we run eight workshops in eight regions. And uh, we have, sorry, we have sent out the participants into actual care um, homes where they spend about half a day with the people who are actually using the services in the nursing homes. In this case, you can see that there are two elderly people and the participants in the middle, and they 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 spend literally uh, their activities for about nine o'clock to four o'clock. They come back, talked about their questions, and their thoughts and uh, and 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 some issues that they found or something that they 
couldn't work out what it was. And so the mixture of participants talk about what they like to get as a care when they need their care. And I'm going to share some videos so you can see, like, get the feel of what it was like. It's been again, I was nine years old, and that was something that I didn't know too well for what I felt. Why are people doing something good? Yeah, 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 もう本当に一言で言うんだったら驚きっていうか、前のめりになっていくようなアイディアが本当に形になっていたので、見ていて素直に楽しい、ワクワクする、本当にすごいなっていうふうに思いました。だからいいなっていう風景をみんなでさまざまトライをしながらああでもないこうでもないってやってきたものがこんなにワクワクする誰かにこんなアイデアがあったよっていうことを伝えたくなるような形になってきてるってことに本当に感激しました。私の現場にいるとなんていうその当たり前の生活をっていうようなことをよく言うけどデザインの部分で実際の現場は全く追いついてないなっていうのがあってやっぱり皆さんすごく楽しそうにお話しされてすごく夢を持ってやってらっしゃるのがいいなっていうのがまず第一印象たくさん貸させていただいてめっちゃ良かったです大いに向かって表現の仕方すっごいたくさんあんねんなっていうことをですね勉強になりました大いと言ってもただの現実的に起きていく話ではありますのでこの今目の前にある課題ないしは次の作っていきたい新しい社会に対してデザイン思考で考える以外は他の方法が僕はむしろないんじゃないかなっていうふうに思ってます考えを巡らしながら今まで来たんですけどこれを作るだけじゃなくて地域で使われるようなものがあればいいなと思ってます。一人ではできない。<笑>ことだったなと思います。一つのものに出来上がるということ自体も奇跡のようなことだったなと思います。あの人もみんな気にしそうにしているし、これからも。これは何なんですか。その外国の方はわからないと思いますね。そので予想を上回る人を見ていただくことができました。えー、さらには自分たちが予想していた年齢層よりも。若いとそういう方々にもたくさん来ていただきました。介護とか福祉のイメージがだいぶ変わったと答えてくれている方もたくさんいた、相当な手応えを感じました。おいおいおいてるというのは、まあ、介護や福祉の専門家の方々が新しい気づきを得るきっかけであり、まあ、その人たちがこれから各地域でそれを実践していく中で、その新しい発想を広げていく、まあ、そんなきっかけだったんじゃないかなというふうに思います。Uh, <clears throat> sorry, I forgot to mention that after the design school, the participants designed 67 ideas and we have exhibited the、uh, ideas in、uh, this exhibition, which run about one week. And they came, we have attracted about more than 10,000 people. So we wanted to change the perception towards the caring and also carers who actually enjoy their work and they respect the elderly people and they find valuable to our society. Thank you. Thank you, Noriko.、Um, I didn't know anything about this design school for care and social welfare. But as you said,、um, our community has many, many different members, like a young child or the elderly people, all cared or carer. 
but everybody is a uh, um, designer in a way. You know, sometimes exactly. the care, yeah. Yeah. care yeah. can be that the carer in some other um, aspects. Yeah, so uh, later I really would like to discuss about it with the other people too. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Noriko. Uh, let's thank move you. on to the second example. Okay, the second is the Osaka Ruskin Morris Center. Uh, as I introduced, introduced before, it is the facility based on the collection of Mr. Norio Tsuyuki, a Japanese companion established in Nose, a suburb of Osaka. It is a process of re renewal and waiting for its public opening. Okay, so Ikuko is an active member of that project too. So will you please introduce us a little bit about that facility, Ikuko? Thank you, Professor Yokoyama. I'm going to share the slide one more time. Okay. Can you see it? Oh, I was ready. <laughs> okay. So uh, thank you very much. And I'd like to talk about what we do at the Ruskin and Morris Center of Osaka. And uh, so oh, as, uh, no. So as uh, Professor Yokoyama said, uh, this center was founded uh, by uh, Mr. Norio Tsuyuki. And uh, this is our center. And I am going to show you the newer picture actually of our collection and the, the building itself. But uh, uh, the center was founded in 2006. And uh, uh, Mr. Tsuyuki actually uh, was involved with the uh, uh, financial management uh, for the culinary institute uh, called Tsuji Chori Shigakko. And uh, because he was in charge of the uh, um, the management, financial management, so that he wanted to study economics in college, so he uh, he started studying when he was forty nine years old, and through that uh, study, he actually found the Ruskin and Morris's. Uh, 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 he encountered Ruskin thought and started collecting books by Ruskin and Morris. And eventually he founded the Ruskin and Morris Center in Nose, Osaka. And uh, now that uh, Mr. Ryo, Ryo Yamazaki is giving us a direction of how we uh, manage the uh, uh, center, but also we uh, members and also uh, uh, yeah, like members are trying to come up with uh, workshops and a uh, uh, events together. And we have more than thousand books and letters related to Ruskin and Morris, and it's uh, which includes the uh, uh, the first edition of Modern Painters and Proof Book of Lectures on Art. Uh, two watercolors uh, by Ruskin and uh, autographs, uh, letters by Ruskin and also Morris as well. And we have slides uh, which were used by May Morris uh, for her lectures to the Women's Guild of Art. So we have this wonderful, wonderful collection and we'd like to utilize and be accessible for researchers and also our visitors. Um, our mission and goals uh, is to preserve, uh, we have three of them, and one of them is to preserve our collection related to John Rosking and Morris and make them publicly accessible for scholars research, as I said earlier. And the second one is the holding exhibition uh, of our books, documents, and lectures. Uh, we will make contributions to revitalize community and cultural development. And, um, our third goal is to make good use of nature, a natural environment, 
and resources of North area. Uh, Noriko was mentioning about Satoyama, and the Nose is actually Satoyama area. So there are lots of uh, rice fields and vegetable fields and stuff, and we have a lot of mountains. And uh, Nose is definitely surrounded by this rich nature, uh, beautiful, beautiful area. But it's only one hour drive away from downtown Osaka. So people are actually commuting uh, for work on the week weekdays and then coming uh, and then they stay on the weekends uh, in the area so they have this like dual life kind of uh, you know work styles and lifestyles are very rich I found um, and so what we do at the center uh, to touch those Ruskin's idea through our activities is the first one that I would like to introduce is renovation of our center. So as Professor Yokoyama mentioned earlier, we are renovating our uh, buildings. Uh, we have three old buildings on the site and uh, actually they are like more than hundred years old. And one of them uh, we, uh, did the renovation last February, and uh, the team Clapton, uh, he is the leader, Akira-san, uh, Mr. Yamaguchi, uh, and uh, his team is architectural designer, and whose motto is do it together, not do it yourself, do it together. So they led the renovation, and not only the center staff like us, but friends and acquaintances of them, but um, also local people from Nose, uh, they came and uh, helped us uh, renovate the center. And um, I also used the impact driver and that was a lot of fun actually. Um, it was empowering in a lot of ways. <laughs> and uh, this is the, the finished uh, uh, center so it's a finished building and we uh, moved our precious book from the old building to uh, to the new one so that uh, uh, we can keep our collection in a safe uh, environment. We also used uh, used the material to renovate uh, this uh, building uh, and we would like to utilize, the uh, materials uh, that is that shouldn't be abandoned and we'd like to reuse and uh, value the material. And the next one is we are doing archive and uh, since we don't have a full list of our collections, so we are archiving our uh, books. Our archive team gather together and uh, one about once a month, and also ah, this is the picture. Sorry, and our collections are accessible for visitors. And Mr. Tsuyuki actually encouraged us to read those books uh, by holding them in your hand. Uh, of course, these books are very, very extremely precious. So we would like to, uh, we also ask uh, visitors to handle, handle them uh, with extra care. Uh, but this is uh, something that, how can I say, uh, if you see the actual uh, work by Ruskin, and if you see the watercolor by him and then see this delicate lines so up closely, then of course you will learn, um, how can I say, um, this uh, delicate art piece is how, it's, how it was drawn. And you can also um, uh, engage with Ruskin uh, in, in different ways, just uh, by looking on a website or in a book or something like that. So um, I thought this is really, really uh, special. And we also uh, have a book club with Mr. Tsuyuki to learn about uh, Ruskin and Morris's idea. And also we, uh, we did a few workshops in the year of 2022 
uh, and one of them was book binding a uh, workshop. This was a very popular workshop, and of course, uh, not only you can enjoy handcrafts, but this will give participants to expose Morris's idea, or the the uh, and the, the participants uh, seem to have a lot of uh, fun from being creative and getting to know people through the workshop and be acquainted with Ruskin and Morris's idea by just coming to our center. So all these workshops and of course the renovation project and stuff, um, I found that um, the guild have this uh, event and uh, activities like uh, in a Sheffield. And I found some similarities uh, local people came to those events and then uh, be acquainted with a uh, Ruskin's idea through doing uh, through those activities. And um, I like to know and learn more about what the guild is doing. Uh, and then also we can uh, maybe uh, practice in Japan as well. So I hope that our uh, exchanging informations and idea would be going uh, in the future. And lastly, uh, we talked about uh, the working style um, as an event. Uh, there are many people in Nose who are trying to embody their ideal lifestyle. And we had this event and we invited guests from the local community of Nose. And afterwards, uh, we actually, the Ruskin Center, uh, how can we connect with them and utilize our center as a base for the local community? Like we wanted to know about it. So uh, we, uh, we had some discussions and we are still uh, from that event we uh, we are we bonded uh, with some uh, key uh, local people in Nose and we are still talking with them and how we can and what kind of things we can do uh, to promote of course Ruskin's idea and Ose, also Nose's uh, how can I say, uh, no say community, like we would like to learn about them and learn about uh, how they are spending their life, like lifestyles and stuff. So uh, this is it from us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kuko. Um, please, yeah. everybody, uh, please visit no say. Um, Maybe the next spring, yeah, when the decision is great. And yeah. Uh, yeah, um, I visited there twice, and uh, it's great that, that you can hold any object in your hands uh, on the spot in the library. And the next autumn, under uh, Keisuke's leadership, uh, we are planning that the exhibition using the the, the Tsuyuki San's collection under the title "Rusking Ribbing in Ribbing Today." All right, so that's another thing that we are looking forward to. It. Okay, last but not the least, uh, impact have. Kyoto. Uh, here we had many activities of Ruskin 2020 starting four years ago. This facility is run by Ms. Toshiko Asai, another companion, but maybe she we are missing her today. So today, another companion who is working with Toshiko, Shoka Nishikawa, use the activities. Okay, uh, Nishikawa-san, please go ahead. ミュートになっているので。ミュートになっているので。オッケー、オッケー。それではまた。That's <笑> ないじゃないですか。画面共有できますか。あ。えっとね、あの画面共有、あの、まず立ち上げておいてスライドを。それは知りたいはずなの。もう一回やります。はい、もう一回やってください。大丈夫です。これは一旦これなんかしたらいい
アンダーバーみたいなの言いますかああ、ありますね。なんか知らない。そこをちっちゃくすると最小化になるので。ちょっと待ってください。しまったね。すいませんね。これならないよね。思いましたね。今さっきやってたのにね。えー、そっか。どうしたらいいかな。えー、っと。もし、ニッチもサッチもいかなくなったら、ファイルを送ってもらって、他のどなたから,から共有するっていう方法がありますね。はいもし、あれでしたら、うん、西川さんを送、まあ、皆さんにそのファイルを送っていただいたら。えっとうん古いファイルだったら私持ってるんですけど、これ3パートに分かれてるから。一回これ切ってから、あの、一回切ってから、私がアップしてやりますから、ちょっと待ってもらえますかえー、っとですねきき、切るということは退出しちゃうってことそうです。そ,そして、もう一回、あの、入りましわかりました。じゃあ、その間にちょっとディスカッションしてますね。はい、はい、はい、お願いします。All right, Rachel and everybody, we have some technical problems. So,、um, unfortunately,、uh, we have some, yeah, it happens all the time to me too. Yeah, yeah okay. So,、uh, Rachel,、um, after the, the Shogun's talk, we are going into the discussion, but we have already had the one question from the, the, the United States. This one. On the chat. Yes. That came from Musha. I don't see a.、Yes. I see just the one name. Yeah. And they have said that they have to go to work because it's time it's to start Ma working. It's in the Ma、States. Mark Usher, one of our new American companions. Ah, Mark、okay. Usher. Thank you, Simon. That makes a lot more sense. And he、okay, wanted、so、to ask if any of the presenters has a view on Kohai Saito's ideas. About degrowth communism and its connection to Ruskin inspired initiatives in Japan. He says, I understand Saito's book, Marx in the Anthropocene, has become quite a sensation. And then he's going to look and see later if anybody has any responses. And he's also included his email address in case anybody、mm -hmm. would like to write to him.、Mm -hmm. um, yeah.、Uh Saito Kohei is really famous with his、um, Anthropocene and、uh, the capitalism. And、uh, well, I think that his latest book is、uh, The Capitalism from Zero, Zero Point. And、uh, I just wondered that,、uh, if there is any Japanese companions who are very familiar with his opinions. Well, it was a kind of the, the big bestseller. But I don't remember that he was mentioning about the Ruskin, did he? But、uh, another very famous young researcher is Manabu Kuwata.、Um, he is also talking a lot about、uh, the Anthropocene and、uh, its connection with the economics. And he is, in his latest book, he is referring to. Rusking a lot from the, the economical point of view in the connection with、uh, Getty and Sodi. So、um, I think I'm going to just introduce those,、uh, him to Musha with the, the email address. Or Mark Usher.、Uh, Mark Simon, Usher. Mark Usher, but he's only r e a d i n g Musha. Yes,、okay. in the name. <laughs> But、uh, he has already left, I guess. Yes, he said he had to start、okay. work.、So. All right. Okay. Yeah. But、so、is, is Shokan going to present? Shokan, are you able to? Yeah. The, the thing is that the Shokan had a discussion some... now. Oh, he is bad. And the Shokan had some problem with the, 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 the slides. So he had to leave once and、uh, yeah, he comes back. Shokan Nishikawa san. Oh, very good. All right, let's get back to Shokan. Do you hear me? 
はい、聞こえてます。OK。Uh, I'm not an academic approach, I'm not an academic <laughs> Zoom <laughs> transaction. Sorry, sorry about that. <laughs> uh, talking about uh, uh, maybe Ito、uh, and and Tolsi Raskin. What? <clears throat> Raskin study has a long time, 100 years,、uh, academic story has made. And Uh, but it、uh, really happened that、uh, active,、uh, lasting activities made by only started by the Ryo Yamazaki sensei and then、uh, lasting 200 events. That starts、uh, in the recent events of lasting. That's I'm telling you today. Ito en is an original、uh, story. Ito en and Tolstoy Raskin story. Ito en was founded in Kyoto by Tenko Nishida in 1904, based on that、uh, Leo Tolstoy's community village. Aiming at、uh, non violence and peace, peace, of, peace of life. Okay, in 2017, only uh, uh, seven, uh, five or、uh, seven years、uh, ago, with Hilary Baker,、uh, is he hearing <laughs> Baker joining the, the seminar? He's a companion. Hilary Baker visited Itoen, who was deeply impressed to see that Itoen community. And she in 2030 saw the Raskin's influence has flown into Itoen, so Tolstoy, because of Tolstoy and Raskin, they s o close relations. That is a story about stuff. And what about the impact hub, relation of impact hub and Raskin? She, she is a a s a i s a n is a, a CEO of impact hub. Mrs. Baker, as I told before, proposed Shokan me. A member of at that time,、uh, Itoen's、uh, member, to conduct a special event of Raskin 200. 200 is that 200 bus anniversary of Raskin. Raskin 200 in Japan, celebrating Raskin 200 bus anniversary of 2019. This is Starting of the story. This responding of、uh, Hillary's proposal, an arrangement committee was for, formed by Toshiko Asai Shi,、uh, Impact Hub、uh, CEO, and Ryo Yamazaki, and、uh, Shoji Sato. Today, she、uh, joining us. And Noriko Tsuyuki is a founder of uh, 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 Raskin Morris Center in、uh, Osaka. And, and me to start a year long program toward Raskin 200. There are so many. Uh, programs we had,、uh, two, two years program. First day, this is the first day, we had seven days of reading section,、uh, reading session that is each professor s、uh, publishing their、uh, own、uh, books. 
we are reading their books and to uh, about the about the Ruskin of course of course uh, we are discussing seven times day first is starting that uh, Ryo Yamazaki is uh, starting that the community origin of community design the second is uh, Chiaki Yokoyama she is not a uh, chair that uh, uh, she's uh, drawing to understanding asking uh, to understand importance of the reading discussing about the drawing of inputs and asking the third is that uh, civic pride explained by the asking and fourth uh, third uh, fourth car fourth is uh, uh, Hattori is that uh, uh, division of class classmanship uh, about the last game. And to the fifth is Sasaki is creative city and last game. And sixth is that the Toda, Professor Toda uh, made a, a session about the Raskin, Raskin's cultural economy. Okay. And the seventh is uh, all together last day. Uh, again, Ryo Yamazaki uh, summarized all the session and two uh, discussions connected to that Raskin 200 symposium to be held in next year, uh, 19th January 2020. That's the uh, uh, last day. In, in a due, in, in, in a, during the time, we had the big draw in Kyoto. Big draw is at the uh, uh, Raskin's one of the program. We had uh, 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 invited the uh, Chiyoko Professor Yokoyama Sensei and to uh, artist of Divya Kato and to uh, uh, big draw at the Kyoto Brand, uh, ba uh, ba <laughs> Botanical Garden. That is very nice. And finally, we had the uh, uh, culmin culmination of seven reading sessions. We had the 19th January 2020. We had the uh, symposium at university, Kyoto University of Art and Design. That was very su successful. And this is a book we summarized, Raskin Festival. This is the one book. Uh, Raskin Festival one was compiling all the events of Raskin 200. Raskin Festival 01 was published with limited edition of 500 copies. This copy, this uh, photo is that uh, Norio Tsuyuki is a master of Osaka Raskin Morris Center. And this is a, a, a cover, cover photo of that book. Okay, finally, we are going to establish Raskin Learning Center in uh, Impact Hub Kyoto. I'm reading it. As the Osaka Raski Mori Center located in Nose, which, which is geographically far from center of Osaka, to complement the inconvenience, preparation for establishment of Raski Learning Center in the Impact Hub Kyoto for, is underway. And our mission, our LC's mission R1 is collaboration of events with Osaka Raskin Morris Center. This is one. The second, holding the regular Raskin learning session jointly with Civic Graduate School, I'm telling you later. The third, carrying out that the Hanase field project aiming at Raskin's environmental and 
so, social innovation. That is Satoyama project uh, that she told, told it before. Okay, for us, uh, is a collaboration of, this is a workshop, is a collaboration. We had just a two, two, uh, two weeks ago, it has just on the, held in 27 September this year, just, just, just before. Impact Hub Kyoto celebrated that limited publication, limited face, uh, face of the book. Number one is series of workshop will be organized to be uh, number two, number three, number three. It, it is the first uh, uh, workshop held. And to Raskin study group at a civil graduate school, Professor Emitas Jun Ikegami, she uh, Raskinian. Uh, we are jointly with uh, that civil graduate school. Uh, we had a continued series of the Raskin study. Okay. Last. This is the last. Last was the Raskin field object that a Satoyama project at the Hanase uh, in Kyoto. We are actively, actually, actively. Uh, to, to, to realize that uh, Raskin's philosophy, this is what, that is all, we, we, that is all we, we, I had. Thank you very much. Thank you, Shokun-san. <laughs> okay, let's get back I'm, to... I, I'm drinking. Okay. <laughs> all right, thank you very much, all the contributors. And uh, wow, I mean, we are really running out of time, but we still have the 50 minutes to go. And uh, first of all, Yusuke-san, thank you very much for the Tadise, the great news that the Kohei Saito is beginning to paying a lot of attention to Raskin and Moore's thoughts. So there are another, you know, well, thank you, another new researchers who are going to join us too. All right, so Rachel. So thank you, Aligato, for all of the wonderful, um, inspiring and informative presentations, which have really built for us a very stimulating sense of all that's going on in Japan at the moment in terms of Ruskin's and his ideas, the vitality, the life, Inochi. Is that life? You know, it's it. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's going on in Japan. And we thought it might be interesting to hear if there are any international perspectives. Mm -hmm. And I know mm -hmm. quite a few of the internationals have had to leave, but I'm conscious, for example, that Judah Armani is here. And I think there's some parallels in what he does with his students. And Bob Richmond is another one. So I wondered if... Judah, and then Bob, you each wanted to say a little bit. Yeah, wonderful. Um, thank you, Rachel. Um, uh, can everyone hear me clearly? Yes, we can wonderful. hear you clearly. Thank you so much for a, a genuinely inspiring presentation. I've learned so much from, from everybody that, that spoke and shared. I've, I've spent um, 10 years working in collaborative and community design in UK and USA prisons, um, working with prisoners and um, officers and then governors on how we reduce reoffending, but doing that in the way that empowers those in prison and those on probation and provides agency. And we've now been, now we're able to do that with the UK government and the US government across over 50 different prisons. In addition, I'm a professor of design at the Royal College of Art and uh, also Rhode Island School of Design. And um, from next week, I'm going to be in Tokyo uh, um, <laughs> running a workshop at the Musashino uh, Art University for one month. So I would very much like to come and visit you I all and, and uh, share with you um 
I'm in the process of finishing a book about uh, uh, social design, and I would very much like to include uh, a lot of the things that I've heard because I think they're quite inspiring. So I will share my email on the chat but um, very, very inspired and very keen to meet you all, hopefully in person. Thank you for sure. We really have to meet in person. <laughs> Bob, would you like to say a little bit? I'd, I'd love to. Um, thank you. I mean, th thank you very much all for this discussion. It has been absolutely, absolutely extraordinary. And I'm just extraordinarily um, um, impressive and, and empowering, you know, the, 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 the level of uh, preparation and care that you've put into the presentation and the talks. I mean, really, really thank you so much. And, um, and it's a great honour to meet you. Um, I'm, I'm, I, I'm an artist based in the north of England and in London. And I, um, I, I live on an estate which is um, very much sort of embedded within the arts and crafts tradition. Morris was here a great deal and... Um, and Ruskin was also sort of very much part of our, um, my, my own um, uh, personal family past. But um, I work in the arts and in, in relation, in basically these days in relation to um, uh, what, collaborative practice, essentially. And so we're in talks with several partners at the moment. But it, uh, there's one which is the Royal School of Drawing um, to establish a centre up here uh, where they can have a sort of a northern outpost for their activities. And the other thing is a, a, new, uh, a new venture with the University of Leeds, uh, which is something called the Ecology of the Sacred, which is looking at the, um, at the um, ancient sites of South America and also those of the north of England as well. So it's a very extraordinary um, uh, new partnership, which is, which is um, emerging. So, I mean, I'm, I'm just, look, thank you once again. And, and I'll share my email address um, on the chat, you know, and, it, and it's an absolute honour to meet you. You know, thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Can we open the floor then a bit more widely in terms of mm -hmm. if anyone has questions, if anyone has noticed links across um, in the midst of the papers that they'd like to talk about. We have about nine minutes left, so we have a little bit of time to have a conversation. Hang is our enemy all the time. <laughs> and we can also, if you'd prefer, type things into the chat function as well. And we'll keep an eye on that too. Um, I just would like to have some message to Judah. Is it right to pronounce? Thank you so much. So when are you coming? I just wonder when are you coming to Japan? Uh, I'll be there next Sunday. Uh, one mm -hmm. week tomorrow I arrive and I'll be there for a month. All right. Well, just because um, this coming Tuesday, we are inviting a dance group of homeless people or the people who experience the homelessness. And some of them were in the prison too. And uh, yeah, so yeah, so I just wondered if we, you could make it or not. But anyway, uh, we should see each other. And Bob, thank you so much. We should collaborate each other. I really would like to know more about your activities. Um, th oh, and thank you boring. so much. Thank you so much. I mean, I, I'm, I'm absolutely, I'm, I'm mean, absolutely up for all sorts of collaborations. I mean, we'd love to come to Japan as well. I mean, we'd, we'd welcome. I mean, every possibility to further these discussions, you know, on a sort of, mm. on a much sort of broader basis. So yes. So thank you very, very much. Thank you. <laughs> Rachel, you're muted. Rachel. Rachel, you're muted. Yeah, yeah, thank you. And I even heard the words and they didn't click in. <laughs> this is the book that Simon put in the chat earlier about when the guild uh, working, or Ruth Nutter sort of working with and for the guild developed her initiatives in Sheffield. Um, and I think we have it potentially at least electronic copies of that still that could be useful in thinking about this from um, the guild and Ruskinian perspectives. Keisuke, you have brought up your 
um Tamara would you like to say something oh uh, um not especially but I I'd, I'd like to ex express special thanks to for for you all and so yeah it's it was great to yeah I had the opportunity so uh if I ask some questions um I'm so I'm wondering the uh what do you think about the difference between the um, community organization, community development in Britain, and um, community social work, and uh, so community design? If if you if you so if if you some case in in outside Japan, so I would like to clear the differences and uh, if 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 uh, any. So so if. If you can, just, oh, yeah. can we hand that to <laughs> Judah and maybe Bob to answer as sort of practitioners who are doing work in that area? Um, uh, I think <laughs> I'll go first, Bob. Um, I think your presentation was very accurate. Um, I believe that there is uh, a real breakaway from the uh, understanding of the delivery of the work. I think where it becomes really interesting is um, it isn't just about bringing groups of people together, but it's designing the exchanges and the conversations. So this is an intangible space of design yeah. where we have to understand the exchange between humans. Yes. We have to understand the rituals that take place between humans. And then we have to say, can we design better exchanges better conversations so that that can foster and nurture empowerment and agency as you have rightly shown um, then neighborhoods and communities have their own fuel to make their own choices and change but i i really loved your um and i think it's necessary we don't quite yet have the language for what are the principles of community design or social design. Uh, we know that they take from economics and they take from art and they take from design and they take from, but the, but the principles and the implementation of these are still slightly vague. And it's uh, maybe with the new iteration of things like service design, we're able to see a more clearer understanding that, um, you know, we, we're still in the same methodology that Socrates spoke of. In order to design something, we need to make sense of something before we can make something. And to your point around planning and aesthetics, I think you're absolutely correct. Design has a role to play in how we make sense of things, how we're able to articulate that which is invisible, how we're able to articulate embodied knowledge, so giving words to things that people know is true, but can't quite express them. And then how we're able to craft those things to something that's quite beautiful. But to, to your point around how does it maybe differ in England, it's still vague and the work still needs to be done. And uh, we need to be able to explore that. But I would very much like to, if you have space and time when I'm out next week, um, to meet and share some notes and thoughts about some of the uh, similarities in a more nuanced way. So, oh, thank you very much, comment, and I'm uh, I'm very glad to see you. And so, um, yeah, so um, it's quite interesting. You are, you you are, you have been engaged with um, prison and uh, so cr criminals. And in Japan, there was there was a very famous film documentary film about. Um, about the a kind of group work, uh, group social work in the in prison. So, so please exchange the information. So, thank you so much. And I realize we're getting short on time, but Bob, would you like to add anything? Yeah, and and I mean, what I'd like to say is that um, is that Kesuke, in in your presentation, I think you put it extraordinarily well. I mean. I think that your articulation of uh, of the basis, you know, around I mean how how you see it and how you see the field evolving, you know, for me was the most articulate representation. I mean, I, I I rather agree with Judah that I think for us over here it's quite a nebulous thing, you know, it's something which is still in evolution in terms of our thinking, 
But I mean, I think this is why um, it's very important to, you know, that we foster collaborative practice in order to hone our ideas around this, to make them, you know, relevant for, you know, this present moment, you know, for, 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 the, for, for the particular sort of social, societal challenges that we face right now, you know, so that, to, and it's to bring that, uh, that, the, that core of Ruskinian thinking um, into the present in a 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 way that, as I say, it's sort of like you know makes it absolutely cogent and relevant in in this present day. And I think honestly, in your presentation, is so um, um, impressive, you know, from my perspective, in that sense, you know, to see how you you bring um, your perspective and to it at, at an international level and how that contributes to our understanding over here so i in in a nutshell i think it's a it, it's a conversation uh, which is in evolution and i think we should carry it on yeah thank you i'm glad to hear that yeah so thank you so much thank you bob we are at what should be our closing time so i think i'm going to draw us to a close it has been wonderful um is that a word i remember correctly just you're right. wonderful, awe inspiring in um, how much I've learned and enjoyed this. When Ruskin set up the Guild of St. George, it was with the intention that the Guild would be an agent for life enhancing. He did not use the word community design, but clearly he was thinking of community design as we've been hearing about it today. And it is so heartening, so positive to see how Ruskin's influence in Japan, we've heard a bit about in England too, is helping to inspire such active, positive community change. It has been an absolute joy. I want to say thank you again to everyone who has participated, everyone who has come. Um, my special thanks to Chaki, who has done so much to coordinate this and to coach me in my Japanese before today's session as well. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, this more than met my dreams for what today would bring. And so thank you. Arigato. And until the next time, mata ai mashu. <laughs> Great. See you again. And Rachel. <laughs> I think that it's time for us to think about the bigger international conference next year, probably. Yes, yes that would be wonderful to develop Thank you. this into a larger, hopefully blended in-person and um, online event to pick up these ideas. That would be Sub really Suppose and have uh, some speech. Okay, I think it's time to close. Yep.